was born, they told my mother that I was going to be severely deformed and mentally retarded, and that basically there would be no hope at all to raise a normal child. Um, she was, I think, 35 whenever she had me, so she was a little older than a lot of women. And also, considering that for my brother, who's five and a half years older, um, his he was delivered by a veterinarian in exchange for my dad to paint his van. So this was a real doctor. <laughs> and so she, you know, took everything they said as true, and this terrified her. So that news made it, made her go through a stress, <laughs> stress overload. And she went into labor a little earlier than she was supposed to. N not that much. Um, I think I was born only two weeks or three weeks early. It wasn't that long. But still, um, the, yeah, they were, and they were terrified. They were terrified that when I came out, I was just not going to be right. And, uh, yeah. And so, but when I was born, uh, it, it wasn't true, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, I was born uh, a little lighter, I think, on the average side, like, uh, under average, just a teensy bit, not that much. But, yeah, I was born normal, fine. You know, the doctor, thank God, was wrong. But, um, I was born, though, when I came out of my mother. <laughs> um, I was silent, which freaked my dad out so much because my brother came out screaming his head off like I believe most babies do and my dad actually thought that I was dead when I came out and also not to mention the news that the doctors had told them before it wasn't that surprising to think that I was but no I wasn't I just was a quiet 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 baby and I was also born with uh, the veil over my eyes which is what a lot of it's an old wives type of thing but in my family especially the women in my family, it is highly believed that any baby born with a veil over their eyes it has kind of a connection into the paranormal, the other worlds, the other senses. So that was believed in my family. My, I think my mother had it, I think my grandmother had it, it um, all of us there, but apparently I guess it's really rare. I didn't know that. I looked it up um, before this and I guess it's a rare thing. But, um, but yeah, so that being said, the veil thing, that, to know if that growing up was true, that's just a whole another story in itself. But, um, I do find it interesting. And, um, yeah. So, I was also born with a hole in my heart, which I guess most babies are. Um, it's not that uncommon, but usually the holes, because they're made so whenever the baby's a fetus, it something about the oxygen gets through whatever, through the heart and the blood. But it's supposed to heal itself before you're born, but mine didn't because I was premature a little bit. And so I, it healed it. I didn't need surgery or anything. It healed itself on its own. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so there was, you know, a few little things about my birth, but, but not really. But everything seemed good, fine, normal, good baby, um, which was great, you know, everything. So... Um, brought home, everything's normal. This was in September, so three months later, fast forward, uh, in December, uh, we lived in Texas then, and it's, so it's always hot. So we were, my mom took me out on the swing. We had a play, uh, play set, I guess, outside, or a porch type of swing outside. And my mom took me out there to, just to swing me, whatever. And it's warm, you know, Texas in December, so it wasn't like, Oh my god, she's taking a baby out in the cold. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, but she noticed that I started coughing a little bit, and so she thought, you know, okay, I just have a cold. But she took me to the doctor anyway. And so they said that I had RSV, which is also a common disease. It's respiratory, some big word, <laughs> virus. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically just like an infection virus, respiratory cold thing that a lot of babies get. But, uh, yeah, so I had that, and so they took me to the doctor, and they said, thank God that you took her here, because if not, um, she probably would have died. So, they put me immediately into 
a baby tent into the hospital emergency room type place and so they put me into a baby tent and basically just loaded me with medication for days and I ended up missing my first Christmas because of this um, and it was really scary everyone thought I was gonna die uh, it was like terrifying for everyone because you had to like sign a waiver <laughs> to um, even go into the room where I was because apparently it was that contagious of a disease and the medication was so strong that you couldn't go in there and like my aunt was pregnant with my younger cousin and she couldn't even see me because of everything that was in the room, the, the virus and, and the medication that was bumping through. So that was definitely terrifying. Um, but strangely enough, that was three months. I was three months old. And I don't know, I mean, I, I, it's my first memory, which <laughs> I know you're not supposed to remember anything before like three or four, which that's really when all my, most of my memories come in. But I remember being in the baby tent. I remember my arm with the uh, bracelet on it and there was like stuffed animals um, in my baby tent. So, which was really weird. And, and the thing why I didn't, I don't think I just made this up is because I knew that I was sick when I was a baby. I had been told that once I got older, but I didn't know like how I was kept. I didn't know what a baby tent was. I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know where I was, you know, and I remember very vividly just this one little image of being in the bed being in there. So I found that, I wonder if it, I don't know why, I wonder if it has to do with like the medication they're giving me, something, I don't know, I find that very interesting. But um, but yeah, so I don't know how long I was in the hospital for, I was in there for a while, um, but I'm not exactly sure how long. Um, I know Santa came and brought me a candy cane, it was very nice of him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it, it was just really scary for everyone. But I made it through, again, obviously, because I'm here now, and I was fine. I didn't, you know, get any lasting effects. Um, I don't have, like, asthma or anything like that. Um, I am really short. I don't know if that... <laughs> I want to believe it's because of that, but it's probably not. Um, but, yeah, I... Yeah, so I had that, and then... Basically, that was the only really problems with my birth. Um, I do know, I th think it's interesting, when I was 10, uh, I broke my clavicle collarbone right here, whatever, on my right side. And when they took the x-rays, there was this weird, like, there was the bone, but then there was, like, this weird thing behind the bone that looked like a thumb. I'm not kidding, it looked like a thumb. And, uh... The doctors have shown me that x-ray, and they're like, well, here's your bone. And we're like, we don't know what this is, but I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> it's like, okay. So part of me thinks that, which would have been kind of interesting, too, is that whenever I was a baby, I was supposed to, I mean, because where does the doctor get, you know, I was supposed to be deformed, I was supposed to be all these things, and I came out fine. So I always think that maybe, like, that's a deformity or something that never popped out. I think it's a thumb. Or, like, maybe I had a twin and I killed it. <laughs> but you know, I used to go around and tell people at school that I had an abnormal, abnormal thumb in my shoulder and um, it freaked them all out. So it was very interesting. But, um, but yeah, so yeah, circumstances of my birth. Uh, I shouldn't be alive. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm trying to get at. There are so many things that went wrong, that should have or almost went wrong that didn't like you know and it's so weird to think that this many years later hey I'm here and I'm fine and I've been fine and I actually people it's really interesting because a lot of the kids uh, that had RSV when they're babies if they survived it um, grew up with really bad like immune system like my friend had it and her immune system is horrible and um, and uh, you know a lot of them get lasting effects but I actually have a pretty decent immune system, knock on, I don't have wood, but knock on plastic, uh, <laughs> I have a pretty good immune system, and, uh, I 
I sometimes get, I mean, I get, I get out of breath easily. Not that easily, like, I can do sort of sports and everything. It's just because I'm out of shape. But, um... You know, sometimes I feel like my lungs are constricting, but it's not like asthma. I don't have asthma or anything. So I think it's interesting that with all of that, um, I was okay, even though I was supposed to not be. And the theme I also read online um, with the veil over your face, which I guess it's just part of like the placenta sac. Yeah, that's fun to listen to. <laughs> that's just like it doesn't come off. And I guess it happens. It's really rare, apparently, but it happens a lot to or who it does happen to is, like, female premature babies sometimes. But I still, I believe in the old wives' tale. Um, but it's also said that they're supposed to have good luck, possibly, and I think that it definitely happened. I think I was a very lucky baby, lucky child. Um, I think there's a lot of things that could have happened in my life that, you know, I could have and should have probably died from, and I didn't, and it's amazing. And, um... Yeah, I, I don't know, I think it's cool that I'm here, <laughs> and I appreciate it a lot, and, um, but I am not 100% lucky, but I do win a lot of raffles, um, not the lottery, unfortunately, but, uh, <laughs> so I think there's some truth, well, I think there's a lot of truth, actually, to the veil, but, um, yeah, uh, I think it's very interesting, just, the circumstances of, of, of a birth and how it changes a person through their life. And, um, yeah, I still think it's weird though that I was a quiet baby. Uh, I didn't know babies weren't, I guess. I, I mean, I figured they would be a lot, but I, I remember, um, I just read a book, uh, from Elena Passarello, uh, called Let Me Clear My Throat. And there's a line in there that really stuck out to me, and she said that, like, every, something about every baby screaming, and it was, like, every baby, and I was like, well, I didn't, and I wonder, I, it just, I never really thought about it being unusual to be kept quiet, and it's one thing, like, my brother was a colicky baby, and so he just screamed and screamed and screamed all the time, and I was, like, quiet, quiet, quiet up until, like, I was a toddler, and I started throwing tantrums, and through, I had a lot of making up to do, I guess, from not crying as a baby, but, um, but yeah, I definitely, yeah, I uh, didn't, didn't cry, and it's weird, and I was like a really good, apparently mom always says that I was a really good baby, I didn't cry that much, and, um, but also they, they were comparing me to my brother, who cried all the time, so maybe I just cried the normal amount, um, but yeah, I, I think it's weird that I came out, and I'm, I'm, a quiet individual now. <laughs> I don't talk a lot. I mean, I talk a lot. I ramble a lot when I get on a subject, but just like in environment, I'm not that. I don't talk a lot, and I, I wonder. It's weird. I just, I don't know. It's just weird how babies, being a baby, <laughs> something you'd barely remember or don't remember affects you now, and I don't know. It's really cool. So that is the circumstances of my birth, um, that's how I was born. I should be dead, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Yay. I don't know. So, yeah, there we go. <laughs>